this is the complete uh, valve diagram for the water system in the van. Uh, it's broken into three sections. Section one is our uh, drainage system uh, for gray water. Next is the uh, what I'm calling the water box, water control box, which is uh, everything in blue. And um, down below here we'll have things that uh, are kind of gravity fed, so they need to be lower and next to the fresh water tank. So we'll start uh, with the gray tank, gray water drainage. Looking at the drainage portion of the diagram, you can see that we have um, our drain sources here. So we have a sink, we have a shower, we have a clothes washing machine. Um, the sink, and then we have two in two gray tanks. One is uh, internal, so it'll be down below the sink, and one is external. And the reason why we wanted to put an internal gray tank um, in addition to the external is is that is for when we're in cold country and we're below freezing temperatures. We still want to be able to use our sink. I mean, it's pretty important for um, food prep. So what we'll do is use these manual valves to redirect the um, gray water into the internal gray tank in cold country. Then occasionally, as the internal gray tank gets full, we'll open this ball valve, this ball valve, and then uh, drain that gray water all at once, then close these immediately before anything has a chance to freeze. Same goes if um, we're going to take a shower. The shower and washing machine go directly to the gray tank. And in those cases, we would have to be hooked up to sewer, but um, you'd have to open up this ball valve here. So that's the drainage side of the diagram. Next, let's talk about the freshwater side of the system. Before I begin, I should tell you that the uh, thick blue lines are pressurized cold water. The thicker red lines are pressurized hot water. The green arrows are no pressure, just gravity fed lines. And the orange are pipes co going to the sol solar hot water and from the solar hot water. So let's uh, start here with the city water inlet. Um, you can see that the uh, city water comes into a T coupling next into a ball valve that will control whether or not this fresh water tank is being filled. We plan on putting an overflow sensor in this that would automatically cause this ball valve to close. Next you come over to this ball valve which allows the city water to pressurize the system and, and used, be used by our cold water fixtures. Um, in addition, if you you know you kind of come back through this way, you can see uh, through the series of decouplings we have a water pump with a check valve so that the city water pressure does not um, backflow uh, through this water pump and overflow our freshwater tank. Coming up this way, we already talked about the cold water fixtures. Next, we come to an accumulation tank. This accumulation tank gives you a far more stable water pressure in the van because the water pump doesn't have to turn on and off um, multiple times per minute. Next, you come into a t another T-coupling, which comes to the hot water tank. And uh, the hot water tank uh, heats the water, obviously, and then through this T-coupling is delivered to the hot water fixtures. Working our way down this way, through this T-coupling, we have a ball valve. This ball valve allows for us to winterize the van. Same same with uh, this this line here. We have cold water fixtures here. T-coupling to a ball valve allows us to drain the uh, pressurized cold water side and uh, winterize. From the fresh water tank, we also have this ball valve allows us to drain this fresh water tank. There is a way to drain all parts of this, including the solar hot water. Next, we'll look at the solar hot water side. So this solar hot water heater is coiled copper that's in a box on the roof of the van. There will be another video that will show that. But it's, it's pretty simple. Water goes in, gets heated in that copper coil, and then exits. We, uh, we have a few modes for that solar, solar hot water. Mode number one is we want to be able to heat our hot water tank without using any electricity. The hot water comes, the pressurized hot water comes out through here, this T coupling. Uh, we open this ball valve, which allows that water to come into this T coupling. This ball valve is closed. 
and then the recirc pump pushes it up to the hot water heater down in this coupling. This ball valve is closed, this ball valve is open, and then it finally delivers that, uh, that water at the same pressure as what was coming out, or approximately the same, um, back into the cold inlet side of the hot water heater. So we have a, a closed circuit by opening these two ball valves, we have a closed circuit recirculation pump um, that heats everything up. Mode number two for the solar hot water heater is uh, if we ever wanted to heat up our fresh water tank. And the reason that we might do this is um, it could be very cold and uh, we would want to uh, heat this up during the day and that would help keep the van warm at night because this water let off heat slowly. So in this case, we would open this valve, comes up to the recirculation pump. And remember, this is at atmosphere, at atmospheric pressure. That's it's basically unpressurized. So um, this recirc this recirc pump would uh, deliver the hot water to the hot water heater. The two hot water recirc ball valves would be closed. Uh, so it would go this way, this one would be open, and then finally it would train back into the freshwater tank. We have uh, mode number three, which um, I might make a couple of changes here. I'm, I'm still thinking about it. But mode number three is that we wanted to heat up this freshwater tank because it does stabilize the temperature in the van quite a bit during night. But there is no sun, so the solar hot water, which is insulated, this box is insulated on the roof would be ineffective at heating the water so in this case we would use our hot water heater and some electricity we would allow this hot water tank to we would turn it on and then we would uh, go through this decoupling open this ball valve and then uh, kind of just let this uh, recirc valve uh, free run Go up through here, open this ball valve, and then it would go back into the fresh water tank. So this would run the uh, water pump quite a bit, but um, I could see I could see doing a couple of cycles of this just to get that water temperature of the fresh water tank up a bit. To simplify the creation, I took the water box, water control box elements, moved them to a separate drawing, and uh, simplified the layout. What you can see here is this is the back of the water box where the city water inlet is. We have solar hot water coming down from the ceiling. And then finally we have uh, six lines that have to be uh, plumbed out of the water control box. In addition, we did this to the elements that are going to be outside of the water control box uh, near the hot water tank and the fresh water tank. And you can see that this uh, is a bit more simplified, so it should be easier to make those connections using our PEX tubing. So going over a few things here, uh, the T joints that are in that diagram are these uh, brass PEX T joints. Um, and then the uh, ball valve is this backhoe uh, ball valve. And you can see here there's a box. It's a 12 volt electric half inch solenoid valve. And I thought I'd just show, kind of show you um, how they work. Uh, it's pretty simple. You can see the ball valve in there is closed. And what we're going to do is I'll set it there and maybe it'll stay. We're going to, um, I have a 12 volt power. I have the yellow lead connected to ground and then you just connect the opposite lead to make it open if I can do it and you can see it open there behind my hands hopefully and then if you want to uh, make it go the other way just connect it to the opposite lead so you toggle the leads the power to the lead and then um, as far as power goes, once these are fully closed, uh, the amperage that they draw drops way down. So, um, you know, it's not going to pull your 12 volt system down and then burn a bunch of energy. Uh, we will 
be turning off the positive and neg the positive side of these uh, using a uh, relay connection board, which I'll show you next. But uh, that's that's the relay. That's the ball valve. So this is my old control board, which I just had mounted on the side of the van. I um, was not thrilled with this layout. It's pretty nappy. Uh, and uh, in version 2.0, so all of this worked in 1.0, but um, uh, in 2.0 we're going to take this relay board, um, which I'll, I'll put the link in uh, in the description below. I'll put the link for the ball valve as well. Um, and any of the other parts like this uh, recirc, valve, recirc pump that I have. Uh, all of this needs to be enclosed. 2.0 the diagrams that I've created are going to the water box. This is the water control box, and I'm going to mount the um, the relay board and the Arduino uh, control board on the bottom. The uh, uh, all of the solenoids and uh, plumbing are going to go on the side, and then at each end I'm going to have um, outputs from the the six outputs um, on one side the city water valve going in the other side and then of course the solar coming out of the top like you can see in the diagram so let's get building there are plenty of videos about uh, PEX and PEX connectors um, in 1.0 I used a connector uh, just the copper ring and the crimper which you can see over here it's uh, pretty simple put them on there squeeze them um, but one thing that I was unable to find a lot uh, was uh, if I made a, uh, I didn't do the connection correctly, um, how to get these things off. So there's another snipper here. And sure, you can snip that copper ring, but what, I had a hard time finding um, like a good way of uh, doing this. So uh, I would snip, I would do one snip on the copper ring. You hear it click, and so now it's cut through. And then for some reason, I would, I you know, I was like, okay, so the copper ring's off, uh, loose now. So then I would start to pull on uh, this blue plastic with a pair of needle nose. And eventually, I figured out that if you you snip it here and then you snip it a third of the way around and that starts to really loosen it up which you can see and then you snip it another third around and now the thing just comes right off and uh, doing this um, also uh, seems to loosen up this plastic piece as well you see it's it's pretty freely turning and then um, usually these things are once they've relaxed a little um, they, they come off pretty easily. Boom. There you go. So, just a little PEX tip. I'm tearing all of my previous connections up, so before I replumb it, I thought I'd pass that along. It took a little while, but I think I have the rough layout of uh, how this is all going to fit in here. And you can kind of see I have... Uh, I have coming out of the end one, two, three. Uh, this is four, five, six. So those correspond with the six lines out that side. These six lines. I have one coming out this side and uh, the solar. So over here is the solar coming up. And this is the fresh water fill coming in from outside. And uh, what I did was I just I just lined it up. It took a little while, but I think uh, I have created this. You can see I have the six uh, off site outside the box uh, lines coming in. I have one line that's going to the solar hot water heater. He's right there. And then, of course, um, city water in the back. I'm thinking, though, um, 
that I, I had the hot water heater towards the front, but I don't think it's going to fit. I have this little four gallon uh, hot water heater, which worked uh, really well in version 1.0. So we're going to keep that uh, the same. And then over here, I've created uh, the second half of the uh, system, which is where the fresh water comes in next to my thumb and then uh, so we, see, we have fresh water coming in uh, here and uh, pressurized uh, water coming out to the excuse me non-pressurized water going into the pump and then once it exits the pump uh, it's going to go into this check valve just like you can see on here so there's the water pump check valve. Now I went, uh, I purchased this hose system which is supposedly uh, keeps your the uh, noise from this pump down. Supposedly dampens that that sound, that vibration. Uh, but that's a lot of hose. I'm not sure I'm going to keep all that. Uh, not sure what I'm going to do there. Anyway. Just uh, giving you the progress. Now I have to fit it all on there and um, then fit it in the van.